Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and welcome back to another episode of the Zhuge Liang Northern Expedition Lore Series, as we continue with episode 14, titled Li Yan. Now in our previous episode, we ended with Zhuge Liang once again forced to prematurely end yet another promising northern expedition. This time, instead of suffering a military defeat, such as the one at Jieting during the first northern expedition, or the failure to siege down Chen Chang during the second northern expedition, Zhuge Liang would actually be stopped by a logistical hiccup caused by his fellow co-regent, Li Yan, who was left behind in charge of supply transport at Hanzhong. And without supplies, the Shu Han forces had to retreat, even though the Wei forces inside Shangbang faced the exact same issues. Now typically, the failure to transport supplies is a major crime in the military, and in severe instances, it can be punished by death. But given Li Yan's standing within the Shu Han court as a co-regent, his punishment would have been light, especially since the main reason behind the delay in supply transportation was weather, as yet another wet summer season made the mountainous passes essentially impossible to traverse. However, Li Yan's fatal mistake was that instead of taking responsibility for the problem, he opted to cover up the issue and deflect blame, turning the situation into a political ploy. First, he sent advisors Hu Zhong and Cheng Fan to inform Zhuge Liang that the supplies have ran out, which is materially different from having supplies but being unable to transport them through the heavy rain-filled roads. Then he set up a fall guy, in Chan Shu, who was in charge of the actual transport, as Li Yan had him deliver the edict to withdraw, only to have plans to assassinate him on the way back as a means to silence him, as then all the blame for the failure to transport and the subsequent falsified edict to withdraw can all be piled onto his name. And we know this to be the case because the first thing Li Yan said to Zhuge Liang when he started returning to Hanzhong is why are you back, as he pointed to the ample supplies within Hanzhong. Unfortunately for Li Yan, and very fortunately for Chan Shu, the assassination attempt failed. So Zhuge Liang not only had physical proof in the edict, but also a living eyewitness in Chan Shu to place the blame squarely at Li Yan. Now at this point, Li Yan probably could have salvaged the situation by just owning up to his mistake. But after hearing about the successful ambush during the retreat, he decided to write a letter to the emperor, explaining how the retreat itself was part of a grand strategy used to bait the Wei forces from their fortified position. But as Zhuge Liang started to investigate farther, paper trails presented conflicting statements soon shined the spotlight squarely on Li Yan himself, who then started begging for forgiveness. Well, certainly, Zhuge Liang could have used martial law to execute Li Yan on the spot, he refrained and instead wrote a request to Emperor Liu Shan, explaining the whole ordeal before asking the emperor to show leniency and only strip away Li Yan of all his titles and positions while allowing his son, Li Feng, to retain the position as the director of the Jiang province. Another interesting note to point out here is that this request was co-signed by 22 other officers and officials from various cliques within the Shu Han kingdom, which goes to show you how unpopular Li Yan was despite his position as a co-regent. Naturally, Emperor Liu Shan granted the request, and Li Yan was able to live out his days in the southern regions of Shu Han until news of Zhuge Liang's death arrived, which triggered a depression for Li Yan, as he was certain that Zhuge Liang was the only person who would have returned him back to a position of power. But with the Prime Minister now dead, Li Yan's health would also soon deteriorate as hopelessness would settle in, and he would die not long after Zhuge Liang's death. Now, before we turn to our discussion of the end of the 4th Northern Expedition and the ambush at Mumen, I want to just take a moment to discuss Li Yan a bit more in order to clarify why he decided to shoot himself in the foot here. 
If we take a look at Lian's background, he was born in Nanyang, in the northern parts of the Jin Province, and worked in his youth as an official under Liu Biao in the Jin Province. So certainly he knew of Liu Bei, as Liu Bei took shelter in the Jin Province for many years before the Battle of Chibi. At that time, many of the Jin Province officials started to favor Liu Bei, but Li Yan was not one of them as instead of fleeing with Liu Bei when Cao Cao attacked after Liu Bei's death, Li Yan fled west towards the Yi province, where he became a member of the Dongzhou clique under Liu Zhang. Now Liu Zhang was impressed by Li Yan and made him the mayor of the capital city of Chengdu, where Li Yan's administrative skills shined. Later, when Liu Bei launched his war for the Yi province, Li Yan was entrusted by Liu Zhang to defend Mianzhu, just north of Chengdu. However, at this critical juncture, Li Yan decided to betray Liu Zhang and surrender over the troops to Liu Bei instead, as he felt he could seek a better future for himself under Liu Bei. And he will be right here, as Liu Bei would eventually elevate him to become administrator of Qian Wei Commandery after taking the entirety of the Yi province. And here, Li Yan will continue to make a name for himself by repairing and constructing a new network of levees and dams. And not known to be a military talent, Liu Bei didn't bring him on the Yiling campaign. But precisely because he didn't take part in this disastrous campaign, he was able to come in as reinforcement at Yong'an or Baidi Cheng, where he would end up assisting Liu Bei in handling the affair of the state during Liu Bei's final year here. And for this reason alone, he would rise to become a fellow co-regent alongside Zhuge Liang after Liu Bei's death. However, the setup of this co-regency was never in his favor, as Zhuge Liang remained in Chengdu alongside the new emperor Liu Shan, while Li Yan was told to stay in Yong'an to guard the borders against Wu. Previously, Yong'an was a political center because Emperor Liu Bei was there. But after Liu Bei's death, Yong'an became a political wasteland as Li Yan became increasingly unhappy with his station. Eventually, the peace with Wu would allow him to move closer to the capital as he will be reassigned to the Jiang province in the southeast. But by this time, it was already clear to the court that Zhuge Liang was the true regent in charge, and Li Yan, who always had a difficult personality, was just a regent in name. So from this point on, Li Yan's goal in life was to elevate himself as Zhuge Liang's equal. Thus, when the opportunity came during Cao Zhen's invasion, he felt like he finally had some leverage over Zhuge Liang, as he initially told Zhuge Liang that he would only come to Hanzhong if Zhuge Liang was willing to rezone five of the eastern commanderies that were part of the Yi province into a new province called Ba and make him the prefect of this new province. Essentially, Li Yan wanted Zhuge Liang, who was the prefect of the Yi province, to give up five of his own commanderies and give them to him, so that the two of them can both be prefects on equal terms. But Zhuge Liang turned him down, as redrawing the map of such a small state for political reasons seems like poor taste. Then Li Yan recommended that Zhuge Liang should take the nine bestowments on himself and make himself a duke, which Zhuge Liang immediately turned down, as such a move would be akin to treason. But Li Yan offered this because he thought Zhuge Liang would be hungry for power like himself, and if Zhuge Liang makes himself a duke, then at least that will leave the position of the Yi province prefect open for himself to elevate to. But Zhuge Liang was never tempted by power or prestige and felt that the loyalty to the Han and Liu Bei was much more important than personal gains. So once again, he turned Li Yan down. And with just this letter of recommending Zhuge Liang to take Nai Bestelment, Zhuge Liang could have killed Li Yan right there just by showing the letter to Emperor Liu Shan, as this was clearly treason. But Zhuge Liang didn't do that, as he still wanted Li Yan's help, 
So he asked once more for Li Yan to bring his 20,000 reserve troops into Hanzhong. And this time, Li Yan finally decided to just blackmail Zhuge Liang by hinting that Sima Yi had offered him a high post within the Wei courts if he defected. Now fearing the worst and remembering what Ambassador Chen Zhen, who was from the same hometown as Li Yan, had told him before leaving for Wu, that Li Yan was a defection risk. Zhuge Liang finally offered a promotion to Li Yan by naming him the General of the Cavalry, while also promoting his son Li Feng to take over as the director of the Jiang province in Li Yan's absence. And this finally enticed Li Yan to come to Hanzhong. So from all these little political bargaining from Li Yan, it is not hard to understand why he would eventually use the leverage of supplies against Zhuge Liang during this fourth northern expedition. While Li Yan would certainly ruin Zhuge Liang's campaign, just when it seemed victory was finally within grasp, it ultimately would be his own undoing as Zhuge Liang became finally fed up with his ploys and showed him the door. So given everything, sparing Li Yan's life, in my opinion, was extremely merciful on Zhuge Liang's part. And with that, our episode here will also be coming to an end, as I feel it was important to fully present the rationale behind Li Yan's action in order to explain why the 4th Northern Expedition ended the way it did, as the historical records covering this particular expedition are the most contradicting and confusing one of them all. So next time when we return, we'll dive into the ambush at Mumen and the death of Zhang He, as well as Sima Yi's actions directly following the 4th Northern Expedition, as he was now keenly aware of how much of a threat Zhuge Liang was to the Western Front. So hopefully you all have enjoyed this episode enough to hit that like button in order to help out the channel, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!